Good morning, friends. Dr. Larry Mittenall. Uh, thanks for checking in again. Um, I am in my office, actually, my work office, so not my home office where you typically see me. And so, um, again, you know, my, my apologies for the background and how unique it is. But this is where I am. And, uh, and you're catching me on a morning when I'm in between uh, interviews. So I'm at the tail end of this uh, national virtual media tour um, in conjunction with you know, Ascension Medical Group and the American Heart Association, which thank you to you guys uh, for making this all uh, possible and setting this up for me. Um, and, and so I just talked to Kansas City this morning and I'll be on, live on a, on a San Diego station uh, in just a little bit. But I thought maybe we could talk, talk about a theme uh, that I've been discussing in some of my interviews, maybe unpacking it a little bit, and that is uh, having patience, you know, for one another as parents, having patience for other people. And so sometimes I think that can sound lofty, that can sound a little, you know, esoteric, and and so you might be asking, well, what does that uh, mean? So let's let's tune in, let's talk um, for a little bit. And, uh, and don't forget to like and subscribe below because that's how we're able to reach and support more families. All right, so um, being patient with one another. So if you are a parent, right, um, as I am as well, then you've probably already gotten this question about half a dozen times, if not more, right? And, and it's been from everyone, not only, you know, the people in your, you know, closest, most intimate uh, friend group, but um, maybe while you're walking outside six feet apart from your nearest neighbor going to, the, going to the park, you've gotten this question, which is, what have you guys decided to do this fall? And they're asking, what have you chosen to do? Are you going to do it in school? Are you going to do some hybrid plan? Are you going to do virtual? Um, have you decided to homeschool and go that route? Okay. So depending on the nature of that relationship, right? Uh, depending on how close you are, depending on how much you want to share, um, you give them a measured answer, right? Um, and you probably leave out all of the mental calculus you did to get there, right? Um, you probably didn't include all the you know medical uh, concerns that you might have for your child and their medical history um, or you or your spouse and you know your background and vulnerabilities and you know based on the work that you do or the occupation that you have um, you probably you know didn't give them your you know Google spreadsheet of you know income and and uh, and things that you need to do and and the contributions from the financial side um, you didn't talk about, um, or you might not have mentioned all of the emotional, you know, health aspects um, for your kids too, that allowed you and your family to arrive at this decision for your child this fall. So, um, and then there's all the research that you've done and the news articles and the stats and the, you know, the things that you've been keeping up with day to day and the emails that you're probably receiving right now as we talk together. So what's the response from your friend, from your neighbor, from, you know, whomever, right? Well, one of the potential responses that you might get is, oh, I would never do that. I mean, you know, if it were us, uh, we just couldn't do fill in the blank, right? And, and that might even lead them to go into their, you know, two or three minute discussion about how they would arrive at a decision or how they would have done it with their children that they've now parented to adulthood. Okay. Um, the potential there is that it leads to a feeling of invalidation. Okay. So that's a, um, a term we use in psychiatry and psychology to, to mean that, that someone has measured your response and said, nope, that's not worthy. I mean, that's the feeling inside is that, oh, that's not worthy. You haven't, maybe you haven't done all your due diligence. You haven't come up with the right answer. And so rather than assume that you are a reasonable person with um, uh, great mental faculties who has made some really important decisions and a careful and thoughtful approach, um, it can feel like they're saying, nice try. Um, you should go back to parenting school. Should you go back to parenting school? No, the answer is no. Um, that, uh, that, you know, for the reasons that I spoke about, I mean, you've decided and made a decision about what your family should do this fall, right? Um, and maybe you were just getting to the place of feeling a little bit of peace around that decision, okay? 
Um, so one, don't let that conversation or conversations that you'll be having like that, you know, over the course of this year, steal your peace, steal that, that little bit of calm that everyone's trying to squirrel away in this really interesting and unique time. Okay. You know, if you assume that their intention was to be helpful, maybe to give another, you know, voice or an outside voice that, um, of things that you hadn't considered before. Okay. So maybe that was their um, approach. I mean, their, their intention could have been to invalidate your decision, but that, you know, assuming that isn't going to bring you peace. So, um, so how do you maintain that peace, right? How do you maintain that peace? So part of it is, you know, don't feel that you have to relitigate, you know, your rationale, um, whether in the moment or to yourself <laughs> once you get home or you're crying in your room, um, that um, that unless you've heard some new information that really you hadn't considered before and that you think may be helpful um, in discovering what the best plan for it is for your family. Okay, I mean, that's that's that can be a reasonable response. But don't feel that you have to start from scratch and, and throw everything out again. Okay. The second is um, don't let it push you towards, you know, anger, right? Um, now, again, naturally, there's going to be some uh, defensive stance in which, you know, you kind of want to tell them, listen, take your, you know, fill in your favorite news agency, take your this, that and the other and, and, and go somewhere else. Right. Um, so don't don't allow that to steep and kind of fester um, in, in you, because, again, that that aims to steal your peace, steal some of your joy um, and and whatever positive expectation you can have going into this fall. And so, and, and lastly, and perhaps the most important piece is, you know, just to recognize that every decision, every decision, every option that you have this fall is gonna be imperfect. It just is. Um, you know, there the schools are, are struggling to figure this out. Um, our communities are struggling to figure this out. And, and as parents, we, we too, um, we're all dealing with imperfect information and trying to help our kids do the best that they can. And, and again, parents, don't tie yourself in knots feeling that, you know, this next decision is the thing that's gonna determine whether my child is you know, in therapy for the rest of their lives or, or what happens. No, okay. Um, this next decision is the beginning of the book, right? That's the, that's the, that's the chapter that says, you know, we found a, a young hero who doesn't fully know their their powers yet, and they've embarked on a journey. Okay, what we do through that journey, how we love one another, how we are attentive to each other's needs, how we make adjustments for the decisions that we make, um, kind of at the beginning of the journey. Okay, that's 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 though that's the fire, right? That's the important stuff of life. That's where the joy can be found. So, um, so again, I just want to encourage you, parents. You're, you know, you have a, uh, you're making um, important decisions, but that decision isn't the whole world. You know, um, be confident in in what you're doing, um, and I know that because you love your kids well, you're going to be open, open to making the adjustments that you need to make to try to help them to have the best year that they can have in this current time. Be encouraged, my friends. Take good care and be well.